So we're out in the bush, we're gonna be making bread rolls today. It's just a little bit of bread flour, a little bit of whole flour, uh, some yeast in here and some salt for seasoning. And we're not doing it by weights and measures. I can feel that it's about uh, the right texture. It's not sticking, it is sticking to my hands, but it'll come loose. So we've got to knead this for at least five minutes just to develop some gluten. It's a little dry, but I think it'll be perfect for the rolls that I'm trying to produce. Wash up with the hands. See, the dough has risen beautifully. It's a little dry on top, but it will be because, you know, it's, it's not sealed perfectly. So I'm just gonna break that in half, two pieces. So I'll get six rolls. So I'm rolling this round like I would on the countertop, and I could do it on the countertop, to be honest, just to get a little tension. Put that on there, knock that fly out the way. Flies everywhere. So, if you think you've got a little raisin in your bun, it's not a raisin, it's a fly. Knock the flies away, pop the glass on top. We're gonna to leave that for about 40 minutes to let those proof. Just take the cover off, Let's sprinkle a little water over the top. They're looking beautiful. I'm going to pop those on there, put the cover over the top. We take some hot coals from the centre of the fire and cover over the top of our lid. Now, ideally, you'd have a nice big shovel to do this because those coals are super hot. So we've got like a, the heat underneath the oven, and we've got the heat on top. So we've got like a, a top and bottom heating oven, and those rolls. I don't know how long we're gonna cook them for, maybe about 15 minutes, and then we'll uncover and have a quick look. And while you're waiting for your bread rolls to bake, you sit under the shade the of a coolie bar tree. I don't know if it is a coolie bar tree. So I reckon we'll be done now. It'll be nearly 20 minutes. Might have been a bit longer, got chatting. <sighs> yeah, they're pretty much done. Yeah, yeah they sound nice and crisp. Can you get it with that? Six lovely rolls. I'm just going to break one of those off, or two of those off. And they're piping hot. No raisins in this one, here we go. Oh. That is so good. All right, clear off you lot. We got some eating to do. So, good morning, good morning. We're in the Karajini, just woken up. Ah, sleep in my eyes, excuse me. It's a little cooler in the mornings. The red dust gets in everything. Joe's still in bed. <sighs> so this is proper Karajini. Car Caragini. Look at the view we've got here. There's another fella rocked up last night. Parked just up here. Beautiful and crisp and cold. There's our the remnants of our campfire. You can see the sun's just starting to hit. The red mountains, the red rocks. Gonna make myself a coffee, get the day started. It's a beautiful spot. There's a there's a few caravans pulled in as well, but nothing's closer to you than I know. Four or five hundred meters. So it's nice and quiet. This isn't like the Karajini Park, the designated park. It's beautiful. And we'll take you for a walk this morning up into the hills. Time to get the coffee on.
beautiful morning. So I've been stood here all this time. <laughs> the sun's come up behind me just to try and show how far away the road is um, where we came in from. Uh, I had to wait nearly <laughs> 10 or 15 minutes for a vehicle to go by that I could, could catch uh, with the camera this morning. The uh, time lapse is going on behind me. The sun has just come onto my back, which has warmed me up a little bit. But it's quiet out there this morning and I just you, I don't think you can see the road unless you see a vehicle drive along it so I was just waiting and waiting and waiting you can just about hear in the background you can see how far away the road is you can just about hear in the background the rumble of a vehicle as it comes in as it goes through the gorge you can hear the noise so uh, anyway got one in the end morning oh morning <laughs> Okay, good morning. So we're all set up now. Uh, we've done a couple of nights here already. We're going to go for a nice walk in the bush now. I want to take you up to a lookout up here. It's quite a quite a big hike, um, but we get a beautiful view and there's a gorge up there. So come on, let's get going. So any thoughts for the morning, Michelle? Thoughts for the morning? For the a bit morning. too early? A bit too early. Nice walk before we get in the car. That's yeah, we like to do a big walk. This is quite a big one get the blood flowing in the morning so if you've got uh, good four-wheel traction you can come up here there are actually dozens of little camping pitches but the further you go up the harder the terrain gets so if you can really rough it to the top there's some big rock steps that you've got to go up the view is outstanding even walking up as you probably drive Driving up is easier than walking up. I'm going to time the walk. Michelle says it'll be straight on without interruptions because there's no one left for me to talk to. I'm talking to all the people that have, well, the two youngsters that have camped. You see, there are these camping bays here. There are several of them. We know because we've been here all day yesterday, there are only two people up here, and we've seen them both. So it's 8 a.m. We set, set off at 8 a.m. It's already getting warm. Old gum tree there. Coming up here, these are pretty big steps of rock. You've got to get your four-wheel drive up. It's pretty steep. Pretty much any four-wheel could do it. But there's no backing out once you're up here. I don't think there's any more turnarounds until the top. So the road gets a lot less road-like. The further you go up, a lot, it's a lot less trodden or driven. Ah, the things we do for a shot, unseen footage. Uh, I don't even know if you can see in the distance this is where we were parked but way down or oh, down in there somewhere you just see how black how oxidized these stones are and that just sort of indicates how much iron ore how much iron there is inside the stones and it's pretty much why the whole of the Australian outback is so red because it is so rich in minerals but anyway, important, water. Don't just come up with one bottle. Bring at least uh, two bottles of water. By the time you get up to the top here, uh, you are gonna be pretty much finished with your bottle and you'll need it for the trip down. Albeit the trip down is a lot easier. And I think we're probably only about, uh, maybe two thirds of the way up, half the way up, two thirds of the way up onwards. Ready? Ready. Oh, other things, sun cream. I got to put my sun cream on this morning and uh, something for your lips that get really dry out here. You'll drink heaps and heaps of water, I mean a lot more than you normally do, and your lips are perpetually dry. So I should have, before I set off, I was getting steep here, before I set off, I should have put some cream on my lips and remember to put my sun cream on, which I forgot, naughty me. I think we're hitting the top here, I can see a bit of flat ground. No, not yet. Oh, I think I might have been a little too hopeful now this is this is the top as uh, you can see a little bit of track going that way and this way there is another 
crew that's come up here this evening. So, some fella. I didn't see them come up. So we've come all the way up, and there's a couple from Melbourne, would you believe, camping just at the top. I didn't see them come up, so we thought there'd be nobody up here tonight. But there was. Good for them. We said the drive up wasn't too bad. And now we come to see this, this gorge. Watch out for the snakes, the spiders, anything else that might eat you. Prickly grass. Now this grass that you're walking through here, <laughs> it's, uh, that's why a lot of people wear um, little covers around their boots because although this grass, it looks like little soft tufts of green grass, it's razor sharp. And this is proper, proper Karajini. These gum trees form on the side of the, the cliffs. Now that doesn't look, well, it does look spectacular. But down here, see that guy down there, how does he survive? And just come to the, nearer to the edge. Just there. You can see how little water the root system of that gum tree needs to be able to survive. And that's an old tree, you can see by the size of the root. Shao won't like it. I'm on the edge of this cliff. But look down here, this big physia. And then, oh, this is, no, okay, it's only 10 feet down, huh? So we're literally on a ridge between two gorges. You can probably see that from the aerial shots. $35 a night at the allotted Karajini Park. Well, this Karajini is priceless, but of course, it's completely free. I know which I'd rather. So that pretty much sums up our Karajini experience. Absolutely beautiful. Don't stay on the beaten track, get off. Um, the park is as it should be, free. Anyway, it's all downhill now, a lot easier. Take care, share the love, and we'll see you later. Ciao. So I can report one hour to walk up and just 30 minutes to walk down. So a bit quicker on the way down, no stopping, but we're almost back. Stand up and go. Just follow the road. Yes.